This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. Alleluia, Christ is risen. I heard more from them from you, so we're going to do it again. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Alleluia. Much better. Much better. Now, I probably have confused you totally because you have John's Gospel in your leaflet, and I read Luke's account. But there is something common in both of those readings and it's the women. The women are the first proclaimers of the gospel in all four gospels, actually. Just an FYI for future reference, just hang on to that little tidbit. Because we miss it sometimes, and somehow we cast it away. But we come this day to celebrate the resurrection, to rejoice in the reality that death is not the final word. And so we gather, even Sunday after Sunday, to rejoice, to remember how important this day is. And then God steps in on that first Easter, and the world is changed. Nothing is the same anymore. Nothing, nothing is the same. The world is transfigured, the world is transformed, and life is changed forever on that first Easter day. And there is nothing natural about resurrection. It is not normal, it is not natural, but it is what God has done and what God did that first Easter morning. And if you will, God completely disrupts the pattern of life and death. And resurrection is an act of God. It's nothing that we have done. It is what God has done in our world. And how often we forget that. We think we are the masters of our own destiny by Jove. Not so much. Not so much. But we want to go down that road because we want to feel powerful at some level. But we live in a world that is punctuated by horror, and punctuated by sorrow, and punctuated by tremendous sadness. This morning, the people of Sri Lanka are suffering because of the death of over 700 people in Christian churches on that island. But God has made a new beginning. God has made a change of all of creation. And so it is that those who are in the tomb ask those women, why do you look for the living among the dead? Why do you come and just stare into the empty tomb? There is so much more that we are called upon to do. There's a story about <clears throat> a young seminarian, and the dean calls him in to his office and says, I want you to preach tomorrow, and he'd never preached before in his life. And he stays up all night. And he gets up in the pulpit, and he asks the people, do you know what I'm going to say? And they say, no. And he says, nor do I. The mass is ended. <laughs> and the dean comes to him and says, I'm not really happy with your response this morning. I'll give you one more chance. So he stays up all night again. And he climbs into the pulpit, and he asks the people, do you know what I'm going to say? Some say, no, and some say, yes. And so he says, those of you who know, tell the others. <laughs> and the dean came up to him and put his arm around him and said, the gospel has been proclaimed this day. That's your job. That's your job is to go into the world and proclaim the good news of Christ's resurrection, this incredible thing that God has done for us, of carrying this Easter Sunday into the world. 
And that's what we need to do. But what do we carry like those women, those spices that were to be used for his embalming? What do we carry around that we don't need, but we carry around anyway that burden us and hold us down? Time and time again, we carry those things. And in this world in which we live, we hear of racism, sexism, homophobia, all the things that try to keep us down. But what we're called to do this Easter Sunday and for the great 50 days, let us not remember that Easter ends tomorrow. It does not. Just remember that. It goes on for 50 days. So let's celebrate as though we mean that. But it's a reminder again and again of all that God has done through this event that we called resurrection. And so it is that we are to rejoice. And so it is that we are to continue proclaiming. And as the dean said, those who know tell those who don't know. And remember to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. But time and time again, we forget that. And we sit comfortably, not only in our pews, but in our places. And we don't want to be bothered by any of that. Because it might mean that we have to do something. But part of who we are, we are the body of Christ. And we are the only mouths and arms and eyes that Christ has in the world. And we need to remember that. It's remembering who we are and whose we are. And so it is that we need to continue proclaiming the good news. So often we forget this building is not the church. You are the church. You are the body of Christ. And so it is that you are called to proclaim the good news. Barbara Brown Taylor has said, what happens in the tomb was entirely between Jesus and God. For the rest of us, Easter began the moment the gardener said, Mary. That's the other reading, the Gospel of John. And Mary recognizes his voice and says, Rabbani. And then goes to tell the other apostles. And again, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. How often we miss that. And that is, in fact, where the mystery and the miracle happens and continues to happen. Not by peering into the empty tomb. The resurrection plays out in 10,000 different places. When you encounter, when we encounter the risen Lord, it's in the daily living, in sharing a cup of coffee with a friend, biking on a trail, or reading a book that impacts your life, or writing a letter to a child or someone you hold dear. It's in the times of quiet reflection and prayer, or putting an extra box of Cheerios in your basket to give to the homeless and the hungry, to give to the food bank. The resurrection happens when you help an elderly neighbor with her yard work, or you seek to be reconciled with someone you love. Resurrection takes place in all big and small ways. We share the love of Jesus Christ with a broken and hurting world. That's what we're called to do. That's when resurrection happens. And it's up to us to celebrate that say that, and continue to offer that to one another. It's, it happens when we come to this table and we listen to God's word and break bread and share a cup. It happens when we live as his disciples and are about the work of the kingdom of God, living lives of repentance and joy. May Easter be for you, a time when you recognize the risen Lord 
in a new way. He comes to us today offering us life, forgiveness and joy, and hope and love. For all of us, at the empty tomb is hope, uncontainable hope. We are its witnesses, and so we are to go and tell. Amen.